Welcome back to day 12 of the Creative Work Hour podcast. What we're doing in the month of November is every day we're taking a few minutes and having a conversation, and it's our entry for a national podcast post month. I will ask a question to start the conversation flowing. Can creativity be taught or only cultivated? Jump in. Yes. Yes to which? Both. Both? I think both. I think... The creative mindset can be, is cultivated. And I'm not sure taught is, would be the word I'd actually agree on. I think more of given space to flourish, so long as that part of the approach recognizes the diversity of all of us and how we learn. Oh, I like that. I like the creativity. This is Alessandra. And yeah, I was just thinking about, you know, er every few months, I'll write some little catchphrases for Creative Work Hour. And one that I was just kind of playing around with, noodling around with, as our friend Michael would say, is Creative Work Hour. Powerful, personal, creative training. Because we do get training here. You know, I do feel like a coach on some days. And someday I'm the person that is begging, please help me. I'm scared of this thing I've decided to do. Bright Shadows, what do you think? I never hear that from you. Much. <laughs> I think the teaching is in the cultivating. Okay. To show a youngster how to draw, they can draw lines, but what's really going to cultivate them to be creative is encouraging them. You can show them the basics, but the creativity has to come from them. So can creativity be scheduled to follow along with that? Is it just free-flowing, spontaneous, or can you schedule it? I think life pretty much determines that we have to create space for it. Yes. I would agree. I mean, we, we make space for creative work hour, right? And we try and create during that. What's interesting about creativity is, you know, it's a human response, right? Or if one is a cat, there's a feline response of creativity. Like animals are creative. They're always finding ways to do things so that they can be lazy and get bigger reward from for their efforts, right? And we're this we're the same way. So my my thought about that is, yeah. There is a protocol that when I sit down and I'm in front of my laptop with my cup of tea and my green Smithson book and my erasable pen, my body recognizes what the next step is most likely going to be. I'm likely going to put a link in my browser and sit with my friends and let my nervous system get used to the idea that creativity is not a lonely job. We may be the one who's the author of or the composer of and so forth, but it's not a lonely job. And it gets easier when you can come alongside and see, oh, oh, this is what it's like. It's like when, when I was in school, there was kinds of homework that I could do on my own, but other homework I had to do at the library where I could see my friends also procrastinating doing the thing that they they say that they can only do at the, at the library <laughs> yeah so this is this is our hangout library or another another way to describe it is the vibe that we have here is breakfast club i like that what's your thought greg i like what shadow said earlier and i also think that it can be scheduled because we schedule time for creative work hours and so we we create during that if creativity had a voice or if your creativity had a voice what would it say if your creativity had a voice what would it say I think most story. often yeah I think most often what it says to me is give me space or mm -hmm. give us space you know we can get really wrapped up in the day to day and when I do have creative thoughts there's the parallel voices saying so when, you know, when are we going to, how can we pause? How can we stop? How can we take a moment right. to, to have the space? And for me, sometimes it's nothing more than grabbing my phone and putting in a, a reminder voice message of come back to this, make the time. You know, can't do it right now, but don't forget. I think that's so important as well. We, we were talking about that a few days ago when you were saying, put a reminder voice in and i'll come back to that rochelle had yeah. mentioned how how do you capture ideas to come back to and we were talking about that yeah i've got i i looked this morning and i have five voice messages 
from yesterday alone saying, come back to this. You know, it's just what it, what it is. And is that something but you I, do on your, on your recorder app, Bobby? I, I, well, I use the reminder app on my iPhone. Okay. So, I don't, the, the, iPhone, so I don't know how that Okay. Works. So there's a reminder app. And the reason I do it there is it's quick and easy and it pops up every morning, the next morning. There's things you 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 didn't assign a date and time to. They're they're there, and I part of my getting going in the morning is just looking through all those. And so you can just pop on the microphone right there in Reminders. So I just open Reminders, hit the microphone, and I say revisit, you know, chapter five because I'll know what book I'm talking about, or right. or you know, call so and so, or change the coloration of that scene. We all remember where, where it is. And then every morning when I turn on, when I wake up and I already in the top of my screen, it scrolls through all those, any reminders that are either unassigned or are assigned for that date and that time or prior. Will that, will that persist until you tell it not to remind me anymore? Will it it will, pers- it, it will persist until I, I click on the dot that's, that implies it's done. They it change sounds, you. <laughs> sounds a little bit like the way I use my Alexa to remind me something, and then every hour she'll remind me until I say I'm done. Which Absolutely. Is great. Yeah. But sometimes it gets a little bit annoying because you're in the middle of something, and then she comes on and you're like, shut up. <laughs> <Not now." laughs> yeah, I was thinking every hour I'd be looking for a gun. <laughs> yeah, I need, to change that. I need to change that setting. I don't think it lets you set the intervals. It's either you have it remind you once or you have it remind you every hour. Probably there's a way to do it, but yeah. yeah. And in the reminder app, just to finish that, I mm-hmm. can assign a, a recurrence or a specific date and, and, and or specific time. So yeah, I do have that functionality. I used to have my Google Calendar set up like that, and I had an IFTT integration that stands for if this, then that. It's a little bit like Zapier. So if, if something happens, so if this happens, if a calendar event comes up, then that, and then the, then that, in this case, was make a phone call. So if there was a calendar event, make a phone call. And so any of my Google Calendar events, it would call me and say, you have a calendar event. But they, they capped out to, I was having too many reminders. <laughs> and I think you can do 30 calls without having to pay unless they've changed that. But there's a lot of, how, how do you use tech? How do other people use tech to remember things? Because this is, this is great. Well, what I do is, is old school because I was finding trying this app and trying this app and trying this other app, it was a bit much. And it was aggravating the ADHD. It wasn't calming me so that I could cognitively perform at a higher level. So after four years of searching on pretty much daily basis, I finally found an actual book that's created in the UK that is the creative work hour book. We even have it like imprinted. So it's the CWH book. And the reason why I have that is because it gives me a space from my half twos and I can just at a glance without anything being charged up, mind you, see where I have left open loops and where I have left loose ends. But even more importantly, amongst those of us in the creative work hour community, if we have something special going on, like Shadows had her 500th posting of her generative artwork and prose project called Daily Echoes. So I had that booked on that, Octo- it was October, when was that? It was October 27th, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, I only remember that in my head because it was in the book. So any of us that have something special going on, we literally book it in the community. And and I'm the one who is in charge of not losing that stuff. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. But it, but it just makes a big difference that, oh, I may be having this kind of day or that kind of day. I may be in my creative work or resisting my creative work. But nevertheless, something special is going on for Greg or for Bobby, or for Ella, for Hillary, or for Shadows. What I forget, though, 
is to put special things in for me. <laughs> the cobbler's kids have no shoes. <laughs> right, Greg? Yeah. And that's one of the great things I like about creative work hour is that for me, it's a big family and that we are there for one another. But we, we, take have... the, we take the fun out of dysfunction though, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If someone's got something going on, you know, we, we talk about tiny desk concerts, which basically is if someone's got a presentation or something they're working on, they want to show the other groups, we'll take time out to look at that and give some feedback. And that's what I really like about creative work hour is that being together that you know to, to help each other and we're proud to show our things off yeah it's it, it's a risk but then we walk taller in our boots for the rest of the day yes absolutely and you were talking about recording it in in your book right and there's a lot to be said for writing for freehanding it the, mm-hmm. the actual movement of the pen on the paper mm-hmm. there's a lot to be to be said for that oh so, yeah, yeah. We'll have a whole nother conversation about writing at the hand on paper. Oh, that's a good screen. You like that one, Shadows? I write with my Apple Pencil on my iPad. Ooh. You're so modern. I get, be- I get the benefit of, of writing electronically that can be converted to text, but the also the benefit of the curse of hand. So as we're finishing off, Bobby mentioned reminders. I mentioned a the Smithson planner. Shadows mentioned using her Apple Pencil with her iPad. And is the app that you use there, Shadows, the one you prefer? Is it Nebo? So the writing that I do with my pencil to, to screen in Nebo is when I'm making notes on something, like when I'm doing the daily echo. Mm-hmm. And to capture things like ideas, I have two notes. One is my daily note that has suggestion list. I don't do to-do list. It's my suggestion list. If it's something that I'm actually wanting to do, I'll put it on the suggestion list. If it's something I just want to explore, it goes into a note called miscellaneous. Ah. That's an obsidian. And obsidian is open from more from the minute I open the computer until I close it. Lovely. And I use my Alexa and sometimes IFTT with Google Calendar. Yeah, Hillary, how about you? What do you use? So what's the question? We were we were just talking about how to like make a note to self, reminders, or what what do you use? You know, I, I use the green book. Hard copy scraps of paper. Oh yeah. Do you lose those scraps of paper though, or are you very organized? Oh, I get drowned in them. Bobby, you keep a, how about you? Do you keep a big jar on the ta- on the table and use them like a, a uh, grab bag? You know, reach in, grab one. Oh, that's what I'll do. That'd be a little more useful than what happens around here. <laughs> <laughs> I always try to go. I always try to go electronic. So I love Trello, but I always end up with stickies on my on my computer, on the back of my phone. It's it's a habit that's hard to break. Yeah, it's a guilty pleasure. I bought two one thousand page blocks of paper that's edged in gold. Because get at me. (laughs) Uh Well, thank you guys so much. Greg, you do a beautiful job of opening and closing conversations. And yes, when, when this session ends, I will get the computer. No, I will get the recording and send it right over to you. That sounds great. Before we go, if you're listening to this on the podcast, we'd like to know what you use to record things to go back later what do you use do you do old school do you do apps let us know you can send us an email to me that's me at creativeworkhour.com yay thanks guys